All right. Uh, appreciate it. Like Steve said, thanks for coming out. Good to see everybody again uh, as well. New week, uh, big challenge this week against uh, Jacksonville State. Uh, really talented team, 7-2. and two. Uh, I'm sure you remember, beat Florida State two years ago in Tallahassee uh, with a lot of the same players that Florida State is playing with right now as well. Uh, beat Middle Tennessee earlier this season, convincingly the same Middle Tennessee team. Sorry, Joe, I know you're a Blue Raider alum. This same Middle Tennessee team that um, beat Miami last season down in Miami. So this is a really, really talented team, a really dangerous team offensively, two quarterbacks. Uh, the starter is a running quarterback that can hurt you with his arm and his legs. Uh, they're fifth in the nation in explosive runs. So I think the NCAA statistically, however they keep it, it's a run over 10 yards as their metrics. So nobody or only four teams in the country have more runs over 10 yards than these guys do defensively. They're, they're one of the leaders in the nation, top five, I believe, in sacks and takeaways. So they're extremely disruptive on defense. They're extremely talented and, and uh, got a system on offense, high tempo. They're the second fastest team tempo-wise in the country behind Tennessee. Uh, so you're going to see them going at warp speed on Saturday. So we've got to be able to handle that as well. They're very aggressive on defense. They fly around, hence the number of takeaways and and um, sacks they have. And then special teams, very aggressive and very impactful also in those in that phase. Also got a lot of respect for Rich Rodriguez, their head coach, has won everywhere that he's been. It's crazy. Uh, we're facing each other now for the first time as head coaches. But, I mean, I go back to my first year in coaching. I was a graduate assistant at Georgia Tech, and he was the offensive coordinator at Clemson and uh, back in 2000. And we won in Clemson, Georgia Tech did, in a shootout. Coach Rodriguez was there then, then went to West Virginia, went up against my dad all those years back when Virginia Tech and West Virginia were in the Big East Conference uh, as well. Then I was an assistant coach at Mississippi State, and he brought his West Virginia team with Pat White and Steve Slayton and all those guys down to Startville one day. And then uh, uh, he went to Arizona. He was kind enough to let me go out and visit him in Arizona one spring when I was coaching at Virginia Tech just to try and you know learn a little bit from him as well. And then I've gotten to know him off the field over the years also. And we've played some golf in the summertime as well. So somebody I think a lot of and have a lot of respect for as a, uh, as a coach. And he's doing a great job with their program as well. Um, excited for us to be back in williams Bryce Stadium for the first of four in a row. Uh, really, uh, we need our fans this weekend, without a doubt. I know our players are looking forward to the opportunity to be back in there uh, again. Nothing like, does, we love going on the road, but there's nothing like being in williams Bryce Stadium and in front of our fans. It's an early kickoff, first 12 noon game we've had in there since early last season. So I can count on our fans to, to get up early and get their tailgating in and then get in the stadium and create the environment that we need it to be as well. You know, for me, I'm a guy that always tries to find a positive in any perceived negative. And certainly we're not happy with where we are at two and six, but one positive is we get a chance on Saturday to show uh, in front of our own fans, the kind of people we have in this program. And then our fans get a chance to make a great statement about why they are the best fans in all of America uh, when they come out and support us in williams Bryce Stadium as, uh, as well. So excited about the week uh, as well. And, um, you know, understand I'm proud of the carry on joiner. I saw where he came in here earlier and talked about, you know, talking to the team this morning about finding some joy and there is you know trust me no one's no one is more upset about our team being two and six than our players and coaches and staff because no one has put more into it um, outside or more into it than our players but I also don't want anybody in our program um, being negative positive energy is a core value of this program and uh we're working to get ourselves out of where we are right now, without a doubt. And we better do that with some positivity. And we better do that with guys that are excited and looking forward to coming into this building each and every day. We've got great young men in this program. They've shown that with the way that they played, uh, the effort they played with on Saturday out in College Station. They show that every day when they come out here and, uh, and practice 
this week as well. Um, I have to carry on's back and all of our players backs and I know they have each other's backs and the people in this building as uh, well because no one wants it more than uh, than those guys without a doubt and you know it's in times like these you you find out I know Proverbs was quite the theme of one of my friends in the upstate last night as well so reminded of the Great Proverbs uh, verse, Proverbs 18.2. And there's a lot of that going on as well, if anybody wants to look that one up also. But feel for people who um, haven't been a part of a team and, and don't understand what that's like. But, you know, our guys, they love one another. They love being around one another. They care for one another. They work their butts off. And no one wants to be more successful on Saturdays than them. And the way to do that is to – uh, work with great positive energy and joy for what they get to do. And they played with great joy out there on Saturday in College Station, and uh, they practiced that way today. Now we need to go play better, and we need to coach better and execute better so we can put four quarters together uh, on game days and not be as inconsistent as we were last week. So need to do a better job of that. But, but uh, we've got great young men in this program that are working their butts off, and what a positive statement we can make on Saturday and as well as our fans. So I don't know what to do. David's not here. Uh, so first question. I know. It's like, it's like Twilight Zone here right now as well. Shane, uh, how about the injuries? Wells, Dang it, Brent, Gene. Yeah, sorry. Wells, Brent, sorry, I'm all. Jones. Yep, sorry. David not being here has got me thrown off, Gene. Um, uh, Trey Jones will not play. He will be out. Um, everyone else is questionable. Those guys that got banged up last week all did a little bit in practice today, some more than others. And uh, as far as Juice, he's getting closer and closer. I don't know if he'll quite be ready for Saturday. I'm not ready to quite rule him out yet, though, Gene. Uh, so to answer your question, Trey Jones out, everybody else questionable, and, and uh, we'll see how the week goes. But nobody that I could sit here today and say, oh, he's definitely out. We're not to that point yet. Shane, you kind of took my thunder. I was going to ask you about DeCarion, and, you know, Debo was talking about it. Obviously, he's an older guy, but having a guy like DeCarion who's – gone through this before, unfortunately, with some of the, the losses earlier in his career. How important is a player like that in terms of being able to battle through this adversity, knowing that you do have four opportunities still, and at the same time, too, trying to send him and the other seniors out on the on the right note? Yeah, I hope uh, Gamecock Nation certainly appreciates, uh, and I know they do, the carry on joiner and what he stands for, as long as all of our seniors. I mean, we got some great seniors, whether they've been here for their entire career or whether they just came in last year like Spencer Rattler. Uh, so uh, they they have a great appreciation for this place and, and love this place. And um, and I hope our uh, I know our fans appreciate those guys. And it is important for us as a team to you know we'll have a chance to get sentimental and all that as we get closer to the end of the end of the season. Right now, our focus and we talked about it this morning is not four weeks from now. It's what do we have to do to have a great week of practice against. Or to get ready for uh, for Jacksonville State, but yeah, I mean, no one wants to win more than our guys, and and um, no one hurts when we aren't successful on Saturday more than our guys as well. But you know, I remember Mike when I got hired here two years ago, three years ago, whenever it was. Um, and I met with every player on the team, and it was a common. I've talked about this before that so many of them talked about how they dreaded coming in this building each and every day and there was no joy so I'll be damned if I'm ever going to be the head coach here and not have our guys not look forward to coming into this building does it suck excuse my sort of language I think I'm okay there does it really stink on Sundays coming in here after a loss yeah does it really stink when being two and six right now yeah uh, but do are our guys still excited to come out here and work each day and practice and be with one another yes uh, because you know uh, there's nothing like being on a team and, and being in a locker room with guys and having that togetherness, whether it's uh, in the locker room, in the meeting rooms, those memories, those moments. And uh, certainly we've got four guaranteed games left and hopefully a fifth one after that. And, and we're going to make the most of every single day. Our guys are going to be excited about coming in this building each and every day. You would have thought we were playing for the freaking Super Bowl the way we practiced out there today. It's because we've got great kids, man. And I love coaching them and got their backs and we have each other's backs. And and I know the real fans out there understand that as well. And uh, we're not proud of the, the record, certainly, but I'm proud as hell of the kids in this program. And and uh, proud to be their coach and can't wait to have four more guaranteed games with them and, and to see if we can be a better team than what we've been these last four, or these, uh, the first uh, eight games.
I think David might have gotten caught up in Spartanburg. Last night. Um, <laughs> yeah, even Phil's not here. I saw Phil was the star of Dabo's press conference earlier as well with jokes from the top row. Um, <laughs> with, with your offense and when, when you guys consider where you played and who you played and, and yeah. all of those factors, what, what do you, where do you guys think you are heading into this last month with, on that side of the ball? From an offensive standpoint? Yes. I feel like we're better for it. Um, somebody, you know, you say, okay, I'm a guy that I always try and find – um, a positive in any negative. And certainly we've had some negatives from an offensive standpoint when you talk about the adversity, losing your all-conference receiver. Yeah, that's a negative, but you know what? We've had some positives with guys like Nick Harbour and his development that has happened uh, rather quickly because of it. You know, I hate that the fact that we're starting our – ninth different offensive line combination this Saturday because of injuries. Um, but a positive from that is we've had some other guys that have developed and have been able to play multiple positions along the offensive line out of necessity, which they will be better for it now because they've gone through that or um, you can go on and on at all positions. But from an offensive standpoint, I feel like we're better than we were. We've been through the fire for sure. Not that we're facing four easy defenses because we're not. These guys are starting this Saturday. It's a, it's, a, it's a challenge just with all the stuff they do and how multiple they are defensively. But I feel like we've made progress because uh, from a personnel standpoint, guys are farther along. We have faced um, – um, some really good defenses, to say the least, some really good front fours. And uh, we've seen a lot schematically as well, you know. So as we continue to get healthier, hopefully getting Vershawn back, which he practiced today, hopefully getting Case and Henry back, which he practiced today, hopefully they'll be good enough to go and play on Saturday. You get those guys back um, along with the development of Mario Anderson and on and on and on development of Nicholas Harbour and hopefully we get juice back at some point we're getting uh, as strong as we possibly can be as we go through get into November and go down this home stretch so like where we are certainly need to score more than we've scored the last few weeks there's no doubt about it we haven't scored enough points because we finished we've been on the losing end of these last few games but but uh, we've made progress and I feel like we're better as a team than we were at the beginning of the month as well. This is the first time you've been in this position as a head coach, you know, with the record where it is. I'm just curious, are there like past seasons or anything that you've sort of been able to pull from in, in helping you to get through this year? Are there people you're leaning on for advice? Like just what has this kind of been like for you the last few weeks? Yeah, it's been challenging. I mean, there'll be time, Emily, at the end of the season to kind of sit back and talk about or hopefully in a couple months everything that's happened and, and looking at it, why it's happened and, and how to be better and things like that as well. But certainly did not expect to be where we are right now. Um, two and six, I think the last time I was a part of a – you know, a season where you struggle that much probably was back at Mississippi State back in 2000, whatever years I was there, four, five, and six before I came here to Carolina. We uh, we had some seasons that we struggled as well. Um, you know, I've been in this situation at Virginia Tech where it was 2014, I believe where it was either 14 or 15, where we were four and six and had to win two games in a row to get bowl eligible. And I think we beat Boston College up in Boston and then Virginia, obviously, at home where you had to beat your rival in the last game. So I've got experience with that. Hopefully that'll pay off in four weeks. But uh, no, I mean, I think it's one of those you don't uh, blow everything up and reinvent the wheel. You stay the course. You kind of look at the big picture of why we why things are why they are right now and how in the short term, we can be better, things that we got to fix. And each week it's something different, it seems like, which is frustrating. But to me, it's that. And it's just kind of staying the course and continuing to be who you are. And I would hope our players would say that I'm the same person right now that I was. Hopefully they'll say that I'm better because I've grown as the season's gone on. But I'm the same person um, that I was last year coming off two wins over Tennessee and Clemson. And at the beginning of this season when we were getting ready to play UNC and, and right now, not happy, but also, uh, um, you know, driven to get it right and, and working my butt, working all of us, working our butts off each day to, to get it right. You talked about the way the team has practiced today and the passion they showed. You've long had them coached on the message of one game at a time. Do you find there's a little extra fire in that message here for them wanting to get that coveted fifth game, if not just for them, but for the seniors especially? 
Yeah, we talked about it a little bit this morning. Like, to me, our mindset, like, I understand when they go outside this building, all they're talking about is you got to get ball eligible, you got to get ball eligible, you got to win four more. They know that. And we talked about it this morning that, look, we're not going to talk about it in this building every single week. Like, we understand what we have to do. We need to win four games to get ball eligible. But the first thing, and you got to figure out a way to beat Jacksonville State this week. So let's not think about the anxiety of what do we have to do. Well, you can't get – the fourth win in a row until you get one of them and it's I know it's cliche but it's process it's it's uh it is focusing on this week and what do we have to do to be the very best we can be and be better than we were last week in order to play well against Jacksonville State and hopefully win the game and and uh and then after that we'll worry about the next one and truly just take it one week at a time because if you're thinking about things four down four weeks down the road you're not thinking about this week and that's when you're going to get you know um woke up pretty quickly if you're not for you one is there an update from the NCAA on TQ's appeal yeah um he lost that appeal they made that decision pretty quickly um I think before I went to bed on Sunday night actually uh and then you talk about some of the new stuff the third down packages some of the direct snaps you kind of got back to last week is that more of a case of learning about your team as the season goes on or just kind of take what you already knew and trying to fine-tune some things week to week are you talking about our offense or our defense? Uh, both, just in general, just some of the newer things maybe you tried. I last think it's week. a little bit of both. Um, you're finding out more about your team um, as far as uh, what they do well defensively. You know, Jaron Willis, I, I've told you guys, like the way he practiced, he continued to flash in practice. And we're like, you know what, this guy continues to do it in practice. Let's find a way to get him on the game, get him uh, in the game more. So that's where some of those new packages on defense came from. Each week, from an offensive standpoint, um, you have to uh, be creative and do what you have to do in order to attack that particular opponent. So we did some stuff last week, some new formations down there on the goal line with uh, DK at quarterback and shifting Spencer out of the backfield and things like that, kind of a wildcat package. And a lot of that more was more um, we're playing against a really good defense that – no one in the country has ran the ball on just up and down the field. So if we get down there on the goal line, we've got to be creative with what we do and let's put our guys in position to go make plays. And that's kind of where that came from. So it's, it's, it's week to week based on the opponent, but then it's also you continuing to learn more about your team and, and then guys in practice, you know, like I've said to you guys before guys in practice, they continue to get better in practice. And when you practice, well, you get those opportunities on, uh, on, uh, on Saturdays. And that's a, Jaron Willis, that's Nicholas Harbour, and Tyshawn Russell, or whoever it might be. Shane Stone Blanton was in here talking about Debo Williams' mentality towards football, and Debo kind of elaborated on that. Kind of walk me through what you're seeing from him mentality-wise and then also leadership and football-wise, too. Yeah, mentality, he's the same way all the time. Like, uh, scary. Uh, he He's all business, and it goes back to – I think I've told you guys like the, his very first day on campus was back in January of 2021 and he didn't have anything that day until whatever time 8 a.m. and at like 5 55 in the morning I walk in the weight room and he's already in there just like working out on his own before he has to be I mean that's just like his mentality and um, he's very vocal he's a very physical football player um, you know, last week showed the team a video of just like some peewee football players back when they were little, just talking about how much they love playing the game. And one of the guys, I think it was a YouTube video of the hardest hitting peewee player of all time. And it was this kid, this kid just waylaying poor little kids up and down the field. And the whole room was like, Debo, you know, that was Debo when you were little. But that's just his mentality. And it's true within the team. And uh, he's become a really good leader as well because he practices hard. He's focused. He's physical. And he's uh, all business all the time. Hey, Shane, with Juice, um, you know, obviously he's wh – what kind of progression have you seen him make over the last few weeks? And what kind of work has he had to put in, you know, that the fans and us as media we're not seeing um, since we're not practicing all that? Yeah, it's a lot uh, just in the training room every day. I mean, you've be, got to be committed to, to getting better. And he continues to be a great teammate. He's in all the meetings, so he's helping the receivers. He's, um, he's in the team meetings, obviously. He's in the special teams meetings. So he's in the meetings. He's still listening. He's learning. He's giving input. And then he's really working hard on his own, uh, whether he's out on the practice field with us doing stuff or whether he's in the training room, which is what he is most of the time in there working like crazy to uh, to get back and uh, to not just get back, but to get back where he is um, 
juice, the, the, the juice that we all remember from last season as well. So he's a competitor. He's hungry to get back and, and uh, certainly on the right track. Hey, Shane, you said the guys were out there practicing today like they were getting ready for the Super Bowl. What, what did that look like? And also with the 2010-2013 um, uh, teams being honored this weekend, uh, you were part of that, especially laying the foundation. Um, what is the importance of that era as far as uh, the history of Gamecock football? As far as practice today, I think just um, a joy of being on the practice field and getting to be out there together as teammates and flying around and competitive spirit. Like one thing about this team is they love to compete and they love to practice. And that's been the case since the beginning of the season. Now, me as the head coach, I got to say, okay, we had a great Tuesday practice. And I know people get tired of me saying it after games that we had a great week of practice. And, and I get it. We got to figure out how we can have a great week of practice and perform consistently for four quarters on Saturdays because we haven't done a good enough job of that. But but it was the same thing last Tuesday too, Rick. I mean, I walked off the field last Tuesday. I'm like, we're getting ready to beat the you-know-what out of Texas A&M based on the way we practice today. And that was just a fire and a spirit and, and – um, an edge about themselves and a focus and, and a desire to get better. And it uh, wasn't quite good enough on Saturday, but it was the same thing out there today as well. Like these guys respond, they compete, they, they, uh, uh, they care for one another. And we just need to continue to have good practices like that, be obsessed with getting better as a team over these next four weeks, and we'll see what happens. And then in regards to the uh, 2010, 11, 12, 13 teams, I think those teams showed what's capable here at Carolina. Um, you know, we were talking about it uh, as a, with the team this morning in the team meeting in regards to um, um, the old saying, they remember November. And we were talking about the 2010 team. And, you know, the, in that November, we beat Clemson up there after we had already clinched the spot to play in the SEC championship game. We went down to Gainesville and won a game against Florida where the winner was going to go to the SEC championship. And that was certainly a November to remember like this upcoming November can be with this team that will be remembered forever if we're able to do what we want to do. But those, those 2010, 11, 12, 13 teams showed that you really can win at the highest level here at Carolina if you have the support from everyone here at this university and outside this building. And, and then we continue to bring in great players and develop them here in this program. Uh, there's no reason why you can't win at the highest level consistently year in, year out. And uh, those teams certainly, certainly showed that. You mentioned Proverbs 18.2. This has been the year of college football coaches finding um, any grievance to, to rant about, per se. How much in your program do you try and use some of the outside noise, maybe outside negativity, to, to fuel your players? Yeah, zero, really. I don't have a grievance with people. I have my players' backs is what I have. And uh, we don't talk a whole lot about the people out here outside this building. And um, you guys that covered us last year remembered after the Tennessee game, I walked in that press conference and I said that, you know, you guys don't get to write the story of the 2022 football team. And um, that wasn't a grievance with, with anyone outside this building. It was um, no one in this, no one cares and works harder and is more invested in what we're doing than the people in this building. And uh, um, we write the story. And right now our story isn't good enough, but we get an opportunity to finish it the right way. So, you know, people on the outside, people pay a lot of money to um, come to these games and they have the right to criticize me all they want. That's part of the job. And, and people can um, b say what they want, you know, but I'm always going to have my players backs, love them deeply and, and uh, will always defend them. And hopefully they, they know that as well. But none, I don't come into team meetings and say, look what this person said about us or look what that said person said about us. Never. I mean, I think I've maybe a couple times used the point spread. You know, hey, we're 20 some point underdogs. Y'all really believe that this team's 20 points better than us. But other than that, um, I don't think I've ever, ever used a um, quote from someone outside talking about our team that I can remember. I lie. I think before we played UNC, I found a I found a video clip of somebody talking about how much more talented North Carolina was than us, and I use that, and obviously that didn't work very well. So that's why I don't do it. 
So, Shane, ju- just to clarify, <laughs> just to clarify, when you mentioned fools with their opinions, is that fans or the media? No, we have fantastic, uh, fantastic fans, without a doubt. So I love our fans to death. I just said that we have the greatest fan base in uh, in America, Gene, and, and that's why I love coaching the people. I love coaching here because we have the greatest fans in America, um, and I'll leave it at that. That's for me to – not you guys. So I love you guys. Uh, Shane, talking about DQ Smith, and maybe not directly his situation, but the targeting rule in terms of the ejection, I think it's been around since 2013. So we've had about a decade. Would you like to see, it might not be specifically DQ's case, but would you like to see some type of, you know, like a flagrant one, flagrant two, like a targeting one, targeting two, just because it feels like it's been around for quite some time, and yet there's still a lot of, Interpret- interpretation calls and the refs are, you know, calling it by the letter of the rule. I think, um, you know, that's a great point. I think there's something that could be done. I understand why DQ is, um, I understand why he has what he, I understand his suspension because the way the rule reads right now, and it's the thing I, I think I told you guys after the game because that's what the officials told me during the game, that it wasn't that he went helmet to helmet. It was because he went, um, uh, he lowered his head and the crown of his helmet hit the Texas A&M's defender's body first. And that's the way the rule reads, and it's pretty cut and dry. I would certainly like to see something changed because um, DQ was not trying – DQ was trying to avoid a targeting penalty right there. Now, we got to coach it better. We don't teach lower our head and hit with the crown of the helmet. I get it. But to me, there's a difference between a guy going helmet to helmet and he's lowering the crown of his head – to hit the guy helmet to helmet and DQ ducking his head and hitting the guy in the stomach or whatever it was for sure. So I don't, um, I don't, uh, um, I don't love it, but I get it on that one. Certainly there could be some adjustments. So, and Gene, if I had any problem with you guys, I would reach out to you guys and let you know, I'm not calling you a fool. I'm not calling anybody in this room a fool. I think there's some voices on social media that, um, that, uh, could take uh, a lesson from that is all. But people have a right to their opinions, and that's what the head coach is. I get an opinion at home. I mean, my kids today uh, was Hall- it's Halloween. Happy Halloween to you guys, by the way. And I can take the criticism. I'm a big boy, so this is Shane sa- not Shane saying that he can't take criticism because that's what I signed up for when I'm the head coach at this university. I have a problem when people take shots at players on our team, and that's what I'm referring to, Gene. And I can take criticism because I get it from my own family. I, I leave in the mornings before my wife and kids even wake up. So I FaceTime them every morning at 730 on their way into school. And today they were telling me that Hunter, my son, has a Halloween parade at his school where all the kids at his school, they dress up in their Halloween costumes and they walk around the track for however many minutes. And the f- parents come and they video and all that. And I was there for it last year. Uh, because it was on a Monday and my wife was telling me that he had that today and I said well why why didn't you guys tell me anything about it um, and Emily said well I knew you had practice and meetings so I didn't think you're going to be able to come and then my Hunter my son said and it's also because you're two and six and you need to be in the office working so I can take criticism um, so please don't think that because I get it at home worse than I get it on social media and I don't get on social media as well but when someone points out to me that something that had happened earlier, then I'm certainly going to, you know, defend our guys as well. But I don't jump on the bus after a game, Gene, and click on notifications on X or whatever it's called right now or uh, to see what people are saying because it's not good, which people have a right to. And certainly the product on the field has not been good enough uh, this season, and I'm ultimately responsible for that. I, uh, I understand that. Talking about finding the joy, there's obviously some fun history happening on Saturday. Just how honored do you feel to be playing in the first ever Gamecock versus Gamecock game? <laughs> it's a chance to make history. Um, is it really the first ever Gamecock versus Gamecock? Wow. I guess I got to read your notes probably. Oh, so I apologize. I haven't gotten to that yet, Steve. Uh, I think that's great. Um, um, two great teams, You know, two great Proud programs. Jacksonville State's got a, a great tradition, storied history, and has some, had some great success over the years and will continue to. And pretty fascinating to, you know, have Gamecocks versus Gamecocks and to be watching another team and, and you know, see that Gamecock logo when it pops up and things like that as well. So we'll worry about the, the um, all that 
down the road right now what we need to worry about is figuring out a way to, to play well and coach well against a really good team. Shane, you talked about how this program has the belief that it can be a November to remember. Yeah. What's it look like from the coaching staff standpoint to get this team ready for the four-game home stand with such small uh, margin for error for what the goals you guys have is? Yeah, it's go back to work, and then it's just that. Understanding, we talked about it after practice today, was just understanding that it is a small margin for error and that the details matter and, like, everything. And we There's – I mean, there's like 16, 17 things from that Texas A&M game that are ingrained in my head that was the – I don't want to say it was the difference between winning and losing, but we're – we somehow don't block a punt when we're like that far from the ball. Or we had a chance at the end of the game to block a field goal and potentially take it back the other way. We're about a step away. Or – whether it be a, a drop or a substitution penalty that we had from a coaching staff standpoint that, that you know, we screwed up or whatever it might be. There's so many plays in that game that, that could have made the difference that we didn't get done. And just making sure that our players understand that that goes back to practice and that every rep in practice matters and every step and every hand placement and every where you put your helmet, if it's in the right, making sure it's in the right gap and just continuing to emphasize that over and over again and just see if we can focus on putting together four consistent quarters of, uh, of football um, is what we're trying to get done. From your perspective, I got two for you. So from your perspective, obviously 2010, nine, whatever years you were here, what was the energy like in this place from your perspective? And then just kind of off topic, but it's Halloween, obviously. What kind of candy is the Beamer household handing out this year? Are we talking like full size uh, candy bars? Are we talking like the snack size? What are we thinking? <laughs> um, 2000, the energy here was high. 2010, it was awesome because that was obviously the first time that that we had done something like that. And, um, you know, you, we had brought in some great recruiting classes. And then 2010 was the year starting off with beating Alabama when they were number one in the country. And then, you know, it just continued to, to go from there and to be able to go down to Gainesville and win and come back that night. And I remember the fans that met us back in the stadium when we got back and, and then following it up at the end of the season with a win over – uh, with a win over Clemson as well. It was just, it was great excitement that continued with the recruiting classes and the win or the, the, the seasons on the field after that as well. I have no idea on the uh, Halloween. I, I won't be there. Um, we had a little Halloween party for all the coaches' kids where they came up here dressed up on, I guess, a Sunday ago. So got to see everybody dressed up. Um, um, uh, my son had his thing at his school today that we talked about. As far as the candy, that's a better question for Emily. We need to get her up here. So that would be good for her to come up here one week and let her answer questions. But I don't know what they have planned, to be honest with you. I'm sure we're not trying to shortchange anybody in the neighborhood, and we certainly want to give out the best that we can. So me personally, I'm a chocolate person. If I was getting any, I'll be here tonight working, and, and she's in charge of, of uh, candy distribution in our neighborhood for sure. Good. Who's going to Paris? One, two. Nobody else? Oh, yeah? <laughs> ah, okay. He's not already there, is he? That's a great opportunity for a Jimmy Buffett song if he was already there as well. So y'all have a good week. Thanks.